Now, I, I know you probably have a million tips for passing exams, but I want to hear your number one top tip for everyone. Number for passing one. Exams. <laughs> Little pressure here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. For me personally, I'm huge on understanding basic principles because during the heat of an exam, you can't anticipate the questions they're going to ask, you know, uh, exactly. Uh, and you can't think too much on the fly. At least I couldn't. So yes. I knew I couldn't memorize my way through the exams. Uh, I had to understand the basic principles. And if I understood the basic principles, then I could adapt to the questions that they had on the exam. Also, it made it much easier to study. Uh, and so, you know, like for FM, uh, I looked at the basic principle there is, you know, you got to identify the cash flows and you adjust for interest. And that's all of FM. You know, yes. it applies to bit, to loans, to, to bonds, to annuities, but that's all it was. And once you understood that and you got good at that, they could throw a question out there and, you know, you're always asking yourself, okay, where are my cash flows and how do I adjust it for interest? And you realize that uh, they may throw different uh, business terms at you, but it's the same principles. Uh, and so if you can be an expert at that, uh, not only will you be successful at that exam, then when you go to like LTAM and you find out, well, that's just identifying cash flows, adjusting for interest and probabilities, it doesn't, it's not a new exam. They're going to throw new terminology at you, but it really builds on what you learn from basic principles from FM and from P. So uh, you'll forget less as you go from exam to exam, and you also remember more during the heat of an exam. When I was studying, uh, you know, some people like to take two hours a day. I just preferred why deal with the commute, and I would just take one day a week off to study, and they were very flexible and encouraging about it. That's a great way to do it. That is really nice. I Every once in a while, I would do that where I'd take a full day, and it's just so productive instead of like little bits here and there. You've got calculus under the belt and you want to take the first exam or the financial math um, one, take that and see see if you if you pass. Yep. And so just just try it and um, and then if you have an exam that you passed on your own and then you can you can actually make the eyes of somebody who's hiring. If you're just saying that you have an interest in it, but you've never, you didn't go through an actuarial program or something like that, it might be hard to do. And I think that's why a lot of guys do drop out because we see in the movies, especially you know the American movies, everyone having fun in college, you know, oh, yeah. big yeah. party, <laughs> and then we get there and it's like, oh flip, you know, there's exams and these exams yeah. are tough. Uh -huh. So I think yeah, that also contributes to to a big dropout rate is the fact that people just don't know what they're getting into when they start actuarial science. Uh, the other place where we hope that it will be helpful, and we had this in mind as we were uh, talking through the content of what would appear in the book, um, on the SOA syllabus, um, I'm a CIS guy, uh, so, so I can't remember which exam it is, but uh, R is a requirement for SOA exams now. Oh, um, really? I, I, I want to say that, yeah. So on the syllabus, there is there is a text for introductory R, oh. um, and it, 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 it's a good book. Yeah. Uh, but as an adjunct for exam preparation, uh, we're hoping that that students may find this of use. No, at the time, I mean this sounds so archaic, but they would even had a study room. Oh, did they really? With carols in it. Wow. And, um, yeah. And so um, I always went in and studied first thing in the morning because that's when I could think the best. Yep. And my day had not encroached upon me. So my approach was I studied from seven to nine in the morning and at nine o'clock I left and I did not go back into that room the rest of the day. But everybody's got their own different ways. Don't let me say one way is the best. But I was able to get a lot of study time. I, I hear people say like there's, there's life, there's work, and there's exams and only two of those can survive <laughs> and I, I, I kind of i kind of found that to be true actually but uh yeah it's tough yeah so sorry I, I interrupted you 
Oh, I was just going to say that I, I also had some good friends who were studying um, at the you know same time as me and sometimes the same exams as me. So, uh, so sometimes I mixed up the studying and the social time a little bit, um, which probably helped uh, help avoid some burnout uh, to some extent. I created, I started to, to create first for, for the, for what was, what's the P exam now, an FM. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of organized everything and uh, for, for my own use, for my own classroom use. And then uh, I got to know the, the, the person who became the president of ACTEX. I, I met him when I was in Texas and we talked a little bit about it. He said, well, you know, I, 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 uh, uh, I'm part of a, uh, an, uh, a, he was at Northeastern University and they, they wrote some, some, uh, study study material for students for some of the upper level exams. He said, yeah. well, maybe, you know, let's see if we can add these to the list. And so I wrote, this, uh, so it, we added the, what, what was then P and FM uh, um, to, to, to his list. And then as I was writing other, or, uh, developing, teaching other courses, I would organize the material and then, you know, thinking about, well, now I have to really be more thoughtful about it because this is going to be used by students who are not in my course. They're just sure. going to be and so I then you have to be careful about organization of uh, of the material. What's important, how, you know, how to how to present it in in, in a clear and readable way, and 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 so those are the things that really go into it. I sometimes try to think of it, and also when I'm teaching, I try to think of how, you know uh, if I if I'm the person listening to this, is is this going to be clear enough? Try to try to put myself in the in the place of being a student, and if if what I'm being presented is clear, comprehensive, um, and, and uh, uh, that, that's that's kind of how I approach that. Uh, the companies that I'm aware of are very supportive. I know ours is, um, but we encourage folks to 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 get started on studying for the exams early. And and you know, anytime you have an opportunity to to take some study time, go ahead and do it as opposed to just trying to think that, okay, I'm just going to take the last four days off. And sometimes you'll yes. be able to do that, but sometimes you might not. Um, I dabbled with the exams. I had support from the uh, bachelor department. Like they paid for my supplies. They gave me study hours. So it's a supported field. It's not yeah. like a, it's not a separate entity. It's like they, want you to take exams if you're about that. I know there's three or four people who, two of them or three of them have their ASAs and a couple others still taking exams. So it's highly supported and I think it's highly relevant. Holding myself accountable and having good time management. What helped me the most was finding a time where I was most productive studying and taking advantage of it. And, um, and I know this is kind of cliche, but keeping track of the hours that I studied so that um, if I had a certain goal I wanted to hit, which was normally pretty aggressive, so that if I missed it, I was okay, but at least shooting for that goal would keep me pretty much on track. Yeah. For me, I studied better in the morning, so I would wake up a couple hours before work and I'd put in a couple hours. If I was able to, I'd do an hour on lunch. And then when I got home, maybe an hour or two, but I wouldn't feel too bad if I missed it because I had already studied uh, quite a bit that day. Right. That was pretty, I think spreading it out too helped because those huge blocks of, you know, six hours studying. I mean, sometimes you just got to do it. There's no way around it. Some of the things I was doing were just a waste of time. Yeah. And so when you reallocate the energy into methods that actually work, it's amazing the results that you can produce. But yeah, to add some more color on that, that exam drought, I definitely had the doubts that I imagine most people are familiar with. If you fail an exam, you start questioning the career path. You know, do I have what it takes to come back from this? Do I even want to come back from this? Yes. Because several more exams down the, down the line, hundreds of more study hours. And kind of the deal I made my, with myself was that if I was going to come back and do it, I was going to change my approach. I wasn't going to put in the 300 hours per exam or the, the 100 hour yep. rule for studying. I was gonna do, do things differently and just decided to try it out and it, it worked. So that's, that's pretty how I got here. <laughs> so for yourself, Roy, uh, these study tactics that you developed, is this something that came naturally to you or is it something that 
once you got your FSA, you look back in hindsight and you're like, oh, that worked really well. I'm, I'm curious if you proactively develop these, these yeah. uh, tactics. That's a good question, Paul. I think it all was more or less driven from a natural desire on my end to maybe take shortcuts or just shorten the amount of time it takes to do anything in life. And I feel like growing up, junior high, high school, I played very competitive tennis and I played soccer and all these other activities and my time was limited, but I knew academics were very important. So even studying in junior high, high school, I would more or less work backwards and figure out what's important for me to do well on exams because doing well on exams equated to a good GPA. And I found myself, you know, scoring very well in academics without necessarily spending, you know, I'm reading through textbooks multiple times, things like that, because I had more of a targeted approach to figuring out what was important and and hitting the key points. Yeah. When I'm you know, reading through material. Yeah, a lot of dedication, and it certainly helps to have study time. I thought the career was great because what career do you get paid to study, <laughs> and then they pay for your exam and your material. Yes. And then when you pass, they pay you more. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good deal. And I did put in a lot more effort for the other preliminary exams. I had, I did a lot. Um, the, the issue was I did a lot of practice problems for the preliminary exams as really the best, um, just even throughout. Don't wait to do the problems. Do them as soon as you, you have a little bit, do, a, do some problems. You Definitely, know, yeah. Every day. Every yep. day. I know, um, I, I agree. Yeah. But I did another thing when I was studying for exams, which I think really helped. And that is, I very rarely studied at home. I very rarely studied at home. One, because at home I was distracted more easily. Go to the right. kitchen, turn on the TV. So what I did was, I'm a morning person anyways. So I would show up to to work before work started. So if work started at eight, I would show up at six or you know maybe two weeks beforehand, five or four o'clock if I needed to. Um, and I would study before work. And if I had work study time, I would usually continue that on in the morning because yeah. again, I'm a morning person. And then if I needed to study more, I studied immediately after work. So I always made my studying at work is almost like part of my, um, yeah, part of my work day so that when I was home, I was actually home. That's Whereas if, if you try to go home and you know, you have dinner, but then now you're going to leave and, and your wife's in the other room watching TV and she's like, Oh, why don't you come watch yeah, you know, yeah. Thrones with me? You're going to be like, yeah, I want to <laughs> watch. Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah. But if you're at work, and then you know you you're not going to leave and do that. So if you can yeah. build it as a part of your work day, I think I think you're going to find that's a lot better. And I also I usually never worked on Saturday ever. You know, definitely during football season, I wasn't oh, working. Yeah. I mean, study. I wouldn't study on Saturday. Especially being um, an Al- Alabama fan. Exactly. So you know, <laughs> Saturday Saturdays were no study. I tended yeah. not to study on Sundays either, unless I it was getting close to the exam. And I needed to, you know, do some sample exams yeah. or work work more problems or whatever. So if you can make it as much a part of work as you can, then it won't feel as big of a drain on you and uh, on your yeah. social life as well. I think when I studied for the exams, one of the things I really always tried to focus on was to really get to the heart of it and, and enjoy the process as much as I could. Because I think mm-hmm. some people really focus on just pass the exam. But I definitely wanted to pass the exam. But the learning process. I mean, I had always loved to learn and I didn't want the exams to be just come just a process, just focused on getting to the end, but to actually enjoy the process and try and get to the heart of each exam as I went through it.